Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here, and today we're going to take a look at a parts list for a do-it-yourself 1.5 kilowatt hour all-terrain electric skateboard. As you know, I've been getting into the concept of skate packing, which is essentially backpacking on an electric skateboard. And in order to do that, I need one that has a lot of battery capacity so that it can go the 50, 75 kilometers between places to charge. So today we're going to get into that, but before I do, please like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below, and let's get into it. For those unaware, electric skateboards are generally divided into two main categories. There's street boards with smooth, solid urethane wheels for paved roads, and all-terrain boards with larger wheels that are normally pneumatic for off-road use. For what I want to do, cross-country skate packing in the Canadian countryside on places like the Trans-Canada Trail, I think it's safe to say I'll need to go the all-terrain route. Unfortunately, a lot of the readily available models for all-terrain electric skateboards are super expensive and don't come close to the capacity I need for a long-range board. The only one that does is the Lacroix Nazar Lone Star, which punches in at the price of a decent used car at a crazy 5,500 Canadian dollars. I need something that can go the 50 plus kilometers between charging points on the various trails, so I decided pretty early on to focus on capacity and range above all else, and none of the ready-built options seemed up to the challenge of cross-country backpacking, so I have to build my own. At first, I came up with a direct drive build list using off-the-shelf parts, including batteries. Not only did the build list top a whopping $3,000 Canadian before tax and shipping, but the direct drive motor I picked from Torque Boards was a horrendous choice for an all-terrain build. I had decided on the direct drive route because I saw flaws with the other two common types of motors. Belt drive motors, I thought, would leave me open to frequent jams and broken belts thanks to debris, and hub motors, where the motor is inside the wheel, were not as efficient and made the wheel much more solid and made it more uncomfortable to ride for longer distances. Turns out, thanks to some Redditors who replied to my parts list sanity check, trying to run an all-terrain build on those motors would put too much stress on them and burn them out. Pretty much everything in my initial build list had to go, so I tossed the initial build list and started from scratch. Thanks to feedback from that thread, I was able to put together a much nicer, more efficient, and cheaper build, especially with the decision to build a battery pack from scratch. I managed to bring the cost down from $3,000 all the way down to just under $2,000 before tax and shipping. And this brings us to the parts list. For the deck, trucks, and wheels of the build, I decided to go with the MBS Comp 95. It's a mountain board that can be upgraded into a motorized version, a 95cm medium stiffness fiberglass and maple deck, wide 41cm trucks with 20.3cm or 8 inch pneumatic wheels. This seemed like an excellent core platform to build my long range skate packing build with, big wheels for any nasty terrain I come across, and a relatively long and flexy deck to reduce vibrations from long distance riding. Shout out to Reddit user 18GSir for bringing this board to my attention. For the drive gears, nothing special here, a set of MBS 72 teeth twin star drive gears they offer that fit their AT wheels. For the motors, I'm going with a dual flip ski 6374 190 kilovolt motor setup, giving me enough juice to overcome any steep climbs or ridiculous terrain I might come across. This gives me a massive 6,500 watts of power and a ridiculous 16 newton meters of torque. I'll be mostly cruising at lower speeds most of the time, so I'm hoping it's more efficient at those lower speeds. I'll be mounting these with a pair of Boardnamics Matrix 2 motor mounts. For the ESC, which is the control unit for those unfamiliar, I'm going with a Flipski Dual FS ESC 6.6 so that it can handle the power draw requirements of the motors. I'll be pairing this up with a Flipski VX1 remote, which is a wireless handheld control unit that communicates with the ESC and controls your acceleration and braking. And finally, we'll talk about the battery. I'm going to build a custom 12S 11P battery out of Samsung 30Q cells. This amounts to 132 18650 form factor batteries wired in a 12 series by 11 parallel configuration, resulting in a 43.2 volt battery pack with an absolutely nuts 1.425 kilowatt hours or 1425 watt hours of capacity. 
This is needed for the large distances I'll be riding on various trails out in the countryside where charging points will be few and far between. I could have gone with a higher capacity cell such as the Samsung 35E, but the 30Q will not only have less voltage sag as I bottom out on my available charge, it also has a much greater lifespan. I'll be mounting the batteries in a waterproof Seahorse 300 case. Additional waterproofing measures will be implemented such as completely sealing up the ESC and applying waterproofing spray where relevant, as I'll likely have this out in the rain during some of the trips I've taken on. And last but not least, I'll be pairing it up with a high amperage fast charger so that I can charge the battery pack as quickly as possible. Long charge times are fine for overnight charging, but if I need to charge up once or even twice throughout the day, the reduced charging times are a must. With this setup, I should be able to tackle 100 kilometers in a day, although obviously it's safe to build in plenty of margins when planning these sorts of trips. So what exactly do I plan on doing with this thing? Well, the eventual goal is to try and skate pack the entire width of Canada via the Trans-Canada Trail. And yes, I realize parts of the TCT require traversing via water. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. For the foreseeable future, I'll have some trips coming up on the channel that will escalate towards this goal, starting with a quick overnighter on my street board this coming May, and a hopeful loop of the Central Ontario Loop Trail later this year, and escalating trips all throughout next year. If everything goes according to plan, I'll be unveiling my secret plan to tackle the longer distances needed for the TCT later next year. So there you go, the complete build list for my cross-country skate packing electric skateboard build. Skate packing or electric longboard touring if you want to be fancy will be a staple of this channel going forward so be sure to subscribe to follow along with this build and the misadventures thereafter. If you want to help fund the build, please visit the links in the description. Check out my online 3D print shop and see if anything piques your fancy as I have lots of outdoors oriented items for sale. Any revenue generated from sales there will now be going straight into this build as will revenue from any other projects I happen to have going on. Other ways to help out include hitting the like button, participating in the discussion in the comments down below, checking out my other videos, and sharing this video with friends. All of those interactions really helps rank our video higher with YouTube's algorithm. Seriously, thank you to everyone in advance who chooses to help out this channel in any way. Follow my Mike in the Woods Facebook page to stay up to date on project progress and the silly little granular details that I leave out of my videos. Thanks for watching guys, and I really hope you like the new channel branding. I spent a lot of time coming up with proper theme for the channel, new thumbnails for almost all of my videos, a new banner, a new logo, and new animated title cards for my videos. I also upgraded my camera to a real proper DSLR camera with a proper mic, massive improvements that I'm sure you, the viewer, can appreciate in video and audio quality. And that about does it for me guys, see you later.